Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan Corbett. I just got back from shooting and saw that Adobe released their new sky replacement tool for Photoshop. Let's jump in and see what it's all about. All right, so before you get started, to make sure that you have the sky replacement tool ready to go, you wanna make sure you go to your Creative Cloud desktop. You're gonna go for updates, click the three dots and check for updates. Just make sure you have the most updated version of Photoshop. All right, so jumping right into the tool, I like to open up Lightroom, select photos, make adjustments, and then if I need to do anything more complicated, open up Photoshop. So that's what we're gonna do here. Go ahead and go to edit in and then edit in Photoshop. So once you're in Photoshop, the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and copy your background layer. This is just a good habit to, to have. And then if you wanted to replace this guy, what you'd usually do is make a selection with your favorite selection tool uh, this is just gonna be a very rough selection here and I'd have to play with it a little bit to make sure it wasn't missing any buildings then I'd go to select and mask I'd have an option here of how I would like to view it and then you can see here that automatically it's missing some things half the building here is, or the dome is not selected there's some parts missing because sometimes the quick selection tool or the the refine edge tool uh, sometimes it just it doesn't detect the blue versus white options that can be really hard for a computer or an algorithm to detect and in order to get it perfect you'd have to play with it manually or download a third-party program now with the new sky replacement tool it's pretty foolproof just go to edit sky replacement and it will automatically detect the sky for you and give you a replacement it also I think does a, a few adjustments to make sure that it looks decent um, and you can see right off the bat we are not getting those mistakes that were made with the quick selection tool or more traditional methods that you might use uh, and we got it with a simple click of the button we just went to edit and then went to sky replacements so now that we're in the tool and we have a pretty basic thing that looks pretty good uh, we also have a few options we can select different skies uh, Adobe gives you quite a few options here that look pretty good. So this is a different type of blue sky. You can notice the whole picture changed and got darker to match the darker sky. Um, and then you have another category called spectacular. If you wanted to add a you know dramatic thunderstorm in the back of it, you could do that. You could also add something like this that's um, quite nice actually with with type of a pink salmon background and then of course you have sunsets uh, but that's the three categories they have right now mostly with the sunsets the spectacular and the blue skies I'm gonna go with a blue sky the reason I'm going with the blue sky is because this was taken on a sunny day in the middle of the day so it's gonna look best with a natural blue sky also if you have sky replacements or pictures of skies that you want to use it's really simple to add those just click the add button here navigate to the places where you have your other sky replacements and then upload those if you want but looking further into the sky replacement tool here you have lots of options where let's say it didn't get it as well as it could you can adjust things by shifting the edge so what the tool here is doing is creating a mask automatically around these edges but if it didn't quite get it right you can shift it way over here you can see the original sky is starting to bleed through and it's basing that off of starting right here near the horizon and near the buildings so if you wanted to reduce that you could and if you really wanted to get sharp with it you could uh, even push it back into the buildings. Sometimes the algorithms, you know, just not gonna get it right on the first time, so you will have to play with it. But honestly, I think from the get-go, this was done very well. And in fact, one of the things I really appreciate is the fact that these mountains in the background were not cut off. They do a really good job of blending that together. Lots of times when I'm doing sky replacements manually, that's something that uh, doesn't always turn out perfectly. All right, so moving on here, we have the shift edge. The next bar would be the fade edge. This is just in case you don't want it quite as sharp, um, you can you can fade it in, blend it in a little bit softer, kind of feather feather it in there. So if if the if the so if the mask is really good and really accurate, you can go ahead and have almost no fade on the shot and have that nice sharp contrast between one layer and the next. 
And if you want to fade it in for a little bit more of a softer effect, you can do that. This is just going to have different advantages for different images. Sometimes it's not going to be perfect. The ability to have these adjustments where the automated software can take you 99% of the way and then you just take it the last 1% is is really helpful and it's going to save us all a lot of time for those of us who replace skies lots in our professional work to adjust the sky like i said usually it does a pretty good job of, of getting the lighting right it has two options you can either adjust the foreground or the just the sky so if you wanted to make the sky brighter you could do that by just sliding this slide here uh, and then putting it back to zero I'm actually pretty happy with how it went. And then you, if you really want to, you can adjust the temperature, making it a little bit warmer or making it a little bit cooler. Uh, once again, I'm going for the realistic touch here. So I'm just going to keep it at zero because they did a good job. Plus, the main thing I'm looking for here in Photoshop is making sure that maybe it's not in its final stages, but the thing that I'm wanting to do is make sure that the two layers here are consistent. And then I'll put it back into Lightroom and make my global adjustments which is a nice strategy to use. So here again, we have the foreground adjustments, right? Once again, the, the photo here is doing just fine, but let's say if we did want to brighten up the foreground a little bit or darken the foreground, we would slide that up and then to brighten it up, we would uh, bring it down. And I actually like the, uh, the foreground br brightening up. I really want the eye to be drawn towards this skyline here of Winston-Salem. And then here, if you wanted to adjust the color, you can do that. Now, you'll notice on the color adjustment on this particular image, it isn't doing much. But let's go back to one of those spectacular images here. You'll notice here that the image has a lot of pinks and salmon colors that is blending into the image. And you can see here that if you wanted to really make it bleed over onto the foreground, you could do that to make it look a little bit more consistent. If you wanted to leave it the way it was, crank it back down to zero, and you can also see where the sky is doing fine here. Now here is a good point to recognize where the mask isn't doing a perfect job. If you want to adjust some things and do some fine tuning inside the tool, you can do that here with a few of these tools. You can uh, move the sky if you really wanted to do that, uh, which I do not. I'm going to put it back where it was. And you also have this tool here. You can change it from a positive to a negative by pressing the Alt or probably the Command on Mac, sorry. Uh, and then you can either add more mask in there or take away the mask and really make sure that it's not bleeding over into the horizon like you can see there. The big issue that I'm seeing is on this building, you had a reflection because of the glass pointing straight towards the sky. So the algorithm or the artificial intelligence assumed that this was sky too. Not true. It's actually uh, just a reflection of the sky. So computers aren't perfect. They all can't always see that. So I'm going to just uh, switch this over to negative here and remove that from the building. That being said, I wouldn't be using that sky in the first place anyway. And on this guy, it looked pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. So that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and press okay on the tool. And then this is what I really love, really love about this tool. It gives you actual masks so that you can work with it as you want. For example, if you wanted to do some other things to the foreground to really make it blend in properly, you can still do that by just selecting the layer that you want and adding your adjustments. So if you wanted to make that brightness contrast, crank it up, feel free to do that. You want to make it really dark, you can do that. If you wanted to change any of the adjustments that you might do, add a curves layer, add a gradient layer, uh, change the saturation if you want, just crank that saturation up as much as you want, you can do that. Uh, or maybe perhaps if we were using the spectacular clouds, we could use this to change the hue and make it uh, just seem like it was taken more closer to sunset to make it blend a little bit better. But the real advantage of something like this is being be able to click on the masks and adjust the masks as you want to do it. So for, for the more advanced Photoshop users or for someone who wants to make adjustments to this, just select the brush tool, make sure you're on black or white, and then look at, look at your mask and see, man, you know what, maybe you don't like the fact that 
there's too many clouds here. So you wanted to blend it a little bit more with your original sky. I would turn down the flow a little bit for this and then just make those clouds a little bit less cloudy. And any adjustments, for example, you wanted to make, you could do that just by adding to the layer mask that they put there for you. You also have the foreground lighting and everything else. Another neat thing about looking at these details is seeing the masks which are applied and why they work so well. You can see the blending that they did with the lighting, the foreground lighting in the sky and why it works so well. Really impressive tool, but let's explore other options and other photos to see where it has its strengths and weaknesses. So here we have an image. I do a lot of real estate that is pretty typical, but lots of times when I'd use automated software within Photoshop or other programs. Sometimes when you have a white house like this on a cloudy day with a white background, usually you're going to have issues with the software and the algorithms attaching to this white brick and the white house in addition to the white sky. So let's just go ahead and click sky replacement and see how it does. All right. So it has done its thinking and we can see that the automated work has done a fantastic job not hitting any of the white parts of the house. This is very impressive work uh, and saves just a bunch of time. I can get a really good mask or I can download a third party program, but being able to do this in Photoshop and getting consistent results is fantastic. I'm actually though going to delete this uh, version because I wanted to go back into the sky replacement and go ahead and make a few adjustments here. We can see that after we apply this, some of the branch detail is a little bit gone. I'm also not completely excited about the lighting adjustments that were applied. The house looks a little bit too dark. So I'm going to brighten that up just a little bit for the foreground. I'm also going to play with the shift edge here. We don't want it to be that far. Let's fade edge a little bit. All right, that will do for me. Let's do a little bit of the lighting adjustments here to make it nice and bright. We can change the color if we want to as well. And that will be that. This image, like I said, isn't perfect. It's not going to be uh, finished right here in Photoshop. Usually I like to put my final touches back in Lightroom, but this is a really good quick and dirty way to get a shot for a listing that isn't too spectacular and you want to be able to just be able to do it as quick as you possibly can. Continuing on experimenting, experimenting with different pictures here, we're going to change this sky, which is more of a blue sky and take the opportunity here of this color and uh, change it to more of a sunset type of photo here. So I'm just going to go to edit in edit Adobe Photoshop, open it up in Photoshop. Once again, always copying that background layer, then doing an edit sky replacement. Now for this one, like I said, we're not going to be keeping that blue sky. We're going to be changing it over to a more, uh, how they call spectacular sky. And right from the get go, you can see how this could work quite well. I'm just going to see what options they have here. Not bad. I'm not thinking I'm liking the pink. I'm going to go with a more traditional sunset option. Yeah, I like that one option because it kind of blends in some of the color samples here are natural to the house that I was shooting. And I think this is just going to be an easy, easy one to get. So looking at the layer here, I can see that it's already done a really good job. So I'm not going to mess with that too much. I am just going to slide these sliders around a little bit. I'm preferring, I think I like this one a little bit more dark and playing with the temperature here, that warmer temperature really just matches and blends really well. You never would know that this, this wasn't the natural sky that was in there. If you wanted to continue making more lighting adjustments, you could. Anyway, I'm just showing the good quality that you can do uh, just very quickly and get optimum results. Another thing that you may want to do in these situations, for example, if you're getting a lot of shots of the same subject, you don't want when you do a sky replacement to have the same identical sky with your foreground. So the foreground may shift angles, but as people start flipping in between pictures, you'll notice the sky has never moved. In fact, it's exactly identical. To avoid that, you have this flip option. So to make sure that, you know, you can switch some things up 
you have this flip option to keep things interesting, but I think it looks most natural that way. Why? Because the sun is coming from this direction and hitting this, the house here. So you want to make sure that the sun is doing the same thing to the clouds that it is doing to your subject, in this case, a house. If you wanted to make sure that things keep looking new and interesting, go ahead and change the scale, then use your move tool and just, just change the sky. Uh, shift it in different directions so that every photo isn't identical. And then uh, that'll usually work out fine. But anyway, so here we have seen some uh, really cool things you can do with the sky replacement tools on the exteriors. But I'm really gonna start pushing the sky replacement tool and seeing some of its limitations, even as exciting and good as this new tool is. So this is the same house that I was just on the outside here. And you can see that um, a lot of the house is blown out. I could just bring down the highlights, of course, because this is in raw and uh, have some nice detail here. But I'm gonna leave that um, a little bit bright. I may, may make adjustments here so that this isn't too, I'm gonna try to help out the tool as much as I can by making a few of the adjustments uh, I'm gonna raise some of these shadows so the inside isn't too black and that will do fine. Go ahead and edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Then we're gonna pull this up. Once again, copy the background layer. And then all I'm gonna do is hit sky replacement and let's see what options it gives us. And that's a pretty neat place to start. Uh, you can see though that, uh, you know, there's some, bleeding over into places that I don't want it to bleed over. It's looking a little bit soft. Plus, I'm not so sure I would necessarily choose that sky. Let's maybe just go crazy here and go for that super dramatic pink salmon sky. I like the way that's looked. As far as the sample that it's gotten, sometimes when I was playing this with this before, because of the highlights here bleeding it over, you could actually see some of the uh, sky here and this render it hasn't happened um, but let's just shift the edge here you can see if the edge isn't quite right you can see some areas where it's starting to show up like those highlights there uh, this isn't the sky but with the algorithms and the artificial intelligence that's that's making these automatic selections you can see areas like here that's starting to lose some detail and really look fake and you can also see some areas here along the windows that are starting to uh, just bleed over and not look so good. So to fix that, we're just gonna shift the edge a little bit. That brings it back nicely. And I'm not sure, let's see where the, the faded edge here is, just playing with that a little bit. I'm thinking I'm liking it down a little bit more. And we also wanna adjust the brightness maybe a little bit darker because when I'm when I'm editing these shots, what I'm really looking for is consistency between the original image and the sky replacement, uh, just so I can make the final adjustments in Lightroom. So I don't want too much of a difference in exposure or uh, temperature. We want to make things look realistic, not make something look just completely unbelievable. So foreground options here, really wanting to brighten up that interior if I can. And I'm liking that. And the color adjustment is going to be a nice, important color uh, option here. The reason I want to do that especially is because getting the, the correct white balance on the inside of interiors can be difficult. But this is going to do a good job of getting us pretty close. Now I go ahead and press OK and it gives me all these options. If I wanted to go ahead and select the brush tool with B and get rid or bring in some sky, for example, I could do that here with, this, with the white selection on the brush and the mask. But if I also wanted to take it away, just make sure I've got the mask selected here. I switch the brush over to black and I brush all of that till it's gone. I've got a 5% flow right now. I'm gonna crank that up a little bit save myself some time but if you really wanted to you could go in to the windows to make sure that the selection is clean or if there was some bleed over or just some flat out mistakes you have the opportunity with these masks to correct it 
Uh, but honestly, even from inside a house, the sky replacement tool is doing a really fantastic job. So I'm, I'm really impressed with this. Uh, you can do all sorts of things, including replacing the opacity here. So if you wanted to, let's say, maybe perhaps it's just a little bit too strong or so beautiful that it's not quite believable, you can reduce the opacity. But I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there because it looks good. Anyway, let's go to a few examples where the sky replacement tool doesn't quite do it. Here is an image where I took in the back of someone's property for a real estate photo shoot and uh, they're just wanting to show off that they have a fire pit on their property. It was a really nice fire pit. Um, but let's say it was a cloudy day. You had um, some loss of detail here. You just wanted to try and replace the blue sky up there. So we're going to go ahead and open that up in Photoshop. Going to copy that background layer. And we're going to go straight to the sky replacement tool. I'm going to leave it there. And here we have the sky replacement tool doing its magic. But as you can see, if you zoom in here, it took the sky reduce the size of the sky image to a really small sample because it detected that this is where the sky was in the image. Problem is the sky is the whole image. So I can, it's okay, not a big problem. I can change the scale of it. But even when you change the scale of it to as far as it will go, then use the move tool to move it around, it's still not covering all the places it needs to cover. You'll also start to notice as well that the, the blending method isn't quite as good as it is when you have just, I mean, just a little bit of sky to work with. So it's not a perfect tool. That being said, to defend Adobe a little bit, this isn't a situation usually where you'd be looking for a sky replacement. Uh, the sky isn't really a big deal here. So uh, there's some times where it doesn't detect things that it should, but you know, no big, no big deal. Here's another example where we just don't have a great sample of sky to work with. Also, you're getting all sorts of, uh, let me reset this image here. Um, the difference in the lighting situations here, we're in a really covered in situation with this house where it's really dark on the foreground. We've got some really bright direct sunlight hitting off that. And then we've got a sky that's pretty blown out. Really tough situation to shoot in. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and set a preset here for some of my realty that I use where it just cranks up the shadows and brings back those highlights. And you can see a little bit better what we're, what we're doing here. Let's, in case we want to replace this guy in this situation, let's see what the sky replacement tool would do. Replace, uh, copying the background layer, hitting sky replacement. I'm going to get a wave. I'm actually going to keep it on that spectacular sky only because we want to be able to see what we're doing here. All right. So the situation is once again, it looks like it has detected this part of the sky and not detected these parts of the sky over here. So you can see that it's just not quite there in this situation. I think we will be able to change the scale of it. A little bit to get it to cover the whole thing and then make the adjustments necessary to make it happen in this situation i don't think you know i'd be using one of those spectacular skies i would probably just be um, selecting a blue sky and in this situation bling it in with that blue sky or another blue sky option looks natural and it looks good um, you just have to play with it a little bit it's not going to get it perfect every time but I'm actually pretty impressed that it was able to do as well as it did in that situation. I hope everyone enjoyed that quick look at Adobe Photoshop's sky replacement tool. My name is Jonathan Corbett. I'm a full-time real estate photographer and videographer based out of Greensboro, North Carolina, and I've been shooting on the front lines of the industry every day for the last several years. And right now, I'm putting together a masterclass including everything I know about shooting, editing, marketing, sales, customer service, and beyond. It's called Real Estate Photography Masterclass. And if you'd like to get notified when it launches, feel free to go to realestatephotographymasterclass.com and sign up to be notified. Thank you so much for watching and always remember to learn, apply, and succeed.